All right, welcome back to another edition of Go Fails from my personal game collection at the 2019 Go U.S. Go Congress. Uh, yeah, this one, this is a game. I'm gonna show you a game. Uh, this is against another Fordon, Sophia Wang, uh, who I don't know how old she is. She's pretty young though, um, so I certainly expect her to be, you know, I don't know, seven Don within a couple of years. Uh, you know, she's just flying through ranks. I think someone told me she was like 3Q last year. So anyway, that's 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 a special talent right there. So anyway, I get to face her off, and this was round two of the USGO Congress. I am black. Uh, you guys ready to see some go fails? I want to take that silence as a tacit approval. All right, so we play this opening, and... Uh, this is an opening I've been playing a lot. Not that I've been playing a lot of Go, but when I've been playing Go, I've been playing this quite a bit as Black. Just, I just like it. That's all. She comes on the inside. Uh, overall, actually, this was this was a really good game overall. Actually, the fails in this game are not going to be quite so apparent or or violent as the last ver last game I told you. Overall, this was actually perhaps one of the best games uh, both of us have played. Um, I will try to point out the you know some of the biggest moves. That were fails for both players, uh, but it was just a really strong game. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, yep. So white, black, uh, kick and play here, and she comes all the way to here. None of this is a problem. I pins her high. The robots are telling telling me a low pincer is better, but again, not a big deal. The robots really don't want to respond locally; they want a tanuki. But again, we can't really count that as a fail. This is just a slight prioritization disagreement. Oh, I do apologize if this video is a little bit noisier than the other window, the other videos. I'm recording this with both the windows open because it's kind of getting warm in here. And so, yes, there'll be passer walker, people walking on by and traffic and all that jazz. So keep that in mind. I apologize. Uh, this is, this is, this move might look strange, um, but it is the correct move. Um, at least according to the robots. This is, uh, there's basically two follow-ups to this formation when you approach it. Uh, white can either attach like that or do this sort of quasi jump and Guess which one's more severe. It's this one So we play this out and She plays this move which is a good move and my Atari here is good her uh, What's this shape Kosumi shape? I guess is really not that good um, The robots say that she needs to fight a little bit more strongly here um, I didn't really look at that sequence too much. Again, I'm not really focusing on White's failures too much. Uh, but I do take the stone. Um, when I was showing this game to some stronger players, they thought this might be dubious, but the robot actually was kind of okay with it. Um, it's a really big take, because now this is, you know, solid eight points in the corner. And this White group feels uncomfortable. So, I mean, I get a Panuki, so that's 30 points. No, it's not 30 points, it's in the corner. Okay, anyway, uh, she comes here, which is a little strange, and uh, I, I back off here. So this is a normal, this is a normal reduction slash asking kind of sequence. Um, black hat traditionally really has two responses. Is this to connect here and let white um, make this kind of shape? And black gets to keep the corner territory, and basically white gets a bunch of other liberties and maybe a little bit more eye potential uh, right here and right here. And, uh, White's actually not unhappy with this. The the corner got shrunk a little bit. Um, yes, there are two more stones that Black can capture for some extra points, but, you know, pretty good. Um, that's the traditional way. Uh, the robot did not like my way. The robot wanted to be really aggressive and play here, which I did think about. Um, the reason why I didn't uh, is because White has this type of move um, to keep everything separated. Oh, oh, White should run this out first and fight. <laughs> Uh, basically, white will fight, fight here, and then when all the fighting is done, um, this relationship between this stone and this stone isn't very good. Uh, I, this would actually would be better if it was on the third line, like the robot predicted, you know, 15 moves ago. So that's if you've never seen that before. Um, again, humans have been playing this one for a long time uh, when they want to fight and put pressure on it. This Hane, uh, man, feels really aggressive, but it's what the robots like to do if they're not gonna connect. I connect though, and I play, instead of the more traditional one, I play this one, which is a little bit riskier, but white doesn't quite get as nice of shape, and it keeps this peep in reserve for black. And so that's kind of what I'm aiming at. Uh, but hint, 
Um, my, fir my first go fail for this video isn't just one fail, it's actually a cloud of failure and uh, a rain cloud, if you will, a, a failure rain cloud. Um, and basically the failure rain cloud is how I manage the shape between the group that's gonna come out here and the weak white group that I'm pincering. Uh, there's basically just three essentially shape points that I miss um, and never get to play. And so that's a pretty big, collectively that's a pretty big failure. If I get zero of those key points, uh, and, and here's the hint, uh, the first of those points is never getting this peep in. That's, that's a big failure. Um, arguably, I could take it right now. And white would be very hard pressed to just give up the two stones. I mean, it's very possible. Um, but this stone is still really functional. Like white feels a little more comfortable. Um, but black got even more profit, now has no problems in the corner. Uh, without this, there is a little bit oops, of uh, an endgame problem, right? Because white has this move uh, to make this cut. And so I have to be very careful about my eye space over here, because white can uh, essentially take it away. Uh, so that would be a reason why I shouldn't play this one. Of course, um, if I'm never going to get this peep in, I definitely shouldn't play this one. Uh, so that's a failure. So that's a failure. All right, over here, uh, white tries to fix some shape. And I play this move. This is a little bit dubious. It's not the best move in the world. It's not the worst move in the world. It's hard to call it a failure. Um, I think the robot just really wants to extend and fight here to make this cutting sequence really difficult on white. Uh, now white is, has all these cuts. Yes, white can try to counter cut. Well, not yet, actually. White can't counter cut at all yet. White needs to go one more. Uh, and I don't know what the best shape move is down here, but let's just play some sort of shape. Um, white's in tatters. Like, like white, white will have, this will have to end in some sort of exchange. Um, of course, actually, of course, white will never run that stone out. So that, that's kind of a fanciful read. Um, so a little bit dubious, but uh, I don't take advantage of it. I play this slow move instead of this key point. We'll say not quite a failure, but uh, definitely missed opportunity. Uh, again, this is a good opportunity right now for me to peep. And so, yeah, this, this is a cloud of failure how I manage this. This is okay. Uh, probably better just to run this way. Um, white can't really seal me in, right? There's there's a peep and then this cut kind of sequence, um, right? There's, there's it's very difficult for white. Um, so running this way is actually not very good. I'm trying really hard to keep them um, separated while my stones get out, but it's it's kind of a failure. Here I should probably just keep pushing. It's fine. If white cuts, I'll just sacrifice and take all this. So this is a little too defensive. Again, I'm, I'm keeping in mind I want the groups to be separated. Uh, I really want to run this stone out. I want to peep here. I want nobody to have a base. This just digs in a little bit too hard. It's, it, it tells white exactly what I want. So white's gonna peep and protect this peep. And this move has the other benefit of, let's say black gets out, uh, white has moves like this. Um, now to potentially link up later. So this is actually not, it's not, um, you know, fully, actually it, is, it just works. Yeah, it just works. <laughs> The stone actually can't connect to anything. So in the game, I think I actually, like I thought I could still separate for some reason when she played it, so I wasn't too concerned yet. Um, I didn't realize it till a few moves went by and went, oh, this move is actually just really good. Um, I thought she was just pretending against the, protecting against the peep and making some eye space, but no, it actually connects both groups. Uh, regardless, my group is weak, so I'm just happy to push out, get a little bit stronger. And uh, she quashes that stone, I come on top. Robot's not in love with that move, but um, still feels like it's a good move, right? It's, it's helping the weak group, it's keeping pressure on, the weak, on her weak group. Uh, it's, it's not a no value move, it, center influence. Oh, that was a big truck. Oh, big white truck, all right. Center influence is always good. And, uh, you know, she responds. Uh, here, I play this move and Again, think about this. This is this is my shape problem, right? So, so this cloud of failure. I miss this peep. Um, this move actually is going to leave behind this cut, which will come back to haunt me a little bit later. Um, but right now, it's quite manageable. Uh, I have counter actions like this um, that sort of make 
white's life a little bit difficult um, but even then it's really hard it's it's hard going very hard going uh, to know exactly what's going to happen here so that looks like a pretty good success for black so white can't cut uh, immediately but it's it is it's for white. This is all in the wrong possibility. If white gets a little bit better shape in here, all these things become possible. White keeps coming down, I follow, and now white just bails and, and gets out. Now, uh, this is where we get to two, the other two key points of shape, that, and I should get at least one of them. Uh, the first of which is this A point. And I knew, like, there's a bunch of things I can kind of do in here. You're going to see me trip over myself later when I do decide to do something. Um, but this A point is particularly valuable. And I don't. I, it's hard to see why. Uh, so let's put some stones out. If I play here, uh, first of all, let's say white tanukis. Well, white just has a flat out problem, right? Like this, this, this threatens to cut through <laughs> very directly. So it, it's going to get a response. <laughs> Uh, can this be the white response? Well, no, not really. This is has the exact same problem. There's not, no problem here for black, and white is cut again. So uh, it needs a response that doesn't involve saving this stone, basically. Uh, so white's options are here, um, but this sets up another peep, essentially, <laughs> which is now a guaranteed eye. And if you remember all this endgame crap, now I don't really care about this, right? Like, I already have a guaranteed eye over here, so it's not like my base can truly be destroyed. Um, so this this is just a key point to make sure white can't make eyes here, and I do. I can, actually. Uh, do, do, do. The other key point that I totally failed to realize is actually this one. Uh, this one is very nice because it pr helps protect against this double peep. Uh, all you Q players have been freaking out, I'm sure. Like, you know, let's say Black Tanookies. Every, every Q player is like, oh, what happens if he peeps here? Or she peeps here. Uh, this is not really a real problem, like right now. Uh, black is essentially too strong. I might even be able to play really strongly here, something like this. Uh, something like this. This looks good. Uh, if white connects here, uh, I think I have... Well, first of all, this is actually still in the ladder, so this is just dead. <laughs> but let's assume... Let's assume... Oh, no, it does. it's not just dead, right? It's uh, slightly more interesting than that. Uh, we can't quite... We can do some interesting things <laughs> to get this group kind of safe. All right. Anyway, uh, all right. so that's that's not just a ladder, but black has a lot of opportunities to make shape over here. Um, but if white connects that way, there is this sequence again to just cut through white. So uh, super dangerous for white, like really not looking possible um, if white tries this double peep immediately. Um, double peeps are great if you are strong, but if you can be cut back, like if your peeping stones get cut, then more than likely you just screwed up. And that's why most, you see a lot of Dom players like totally not scared of double peeps, where Q players are like, oh my god, he's going to double peep me. It's because if you actually take advantage of the double peep, your shape is going to suck either so much you won't be able to make eyes and you'll shrivel and die, or black will just cut you, cut those stones off in particular and be, you know, killing you. All right, so here, uh, and this is this is this is the moment I want to say this is this is the go fail because at this point I Tanuki without getting either of these sort of key point moves, and uh, this is label them just whoops. So I didn't get that one. That one was supposed to be mine. I didn't get that one. That was supposed to be mine, and I didn't take that one. That one was supposed to be mine. And I'm Tanukiing, right? If I get, oh, let's say two of the three of these, um, this whole thing goes so much easier for me. Um, I'm really in a great position. That being said, I'm not in a bad position. Like, I'm actually still very much winning this game. Maybe not very much, but, eh, you know, but it's certainly better than maybe 55% winning the game. 50-60%. Um, but, yeah, this, these these little, not having these little moves are going to come back to haunt me a little bit. Uh, we play out this quasi little settling formation. Um, and I, I'm treating this like I have a wall here, and so, like, white can be attacked. She's a little scared. She just keeps running out. These are kind of dame moves, so I'm I'm kind of happy just to be making points on her side of the board. Uh, that being said, um, this move is probably worth a tanuki just to come back and play, fix, or do any of these shape points. Again, uh, white's group is strong now after this A point. 
Once it's connected, uh, she can kind of cut and do any sort of reckless thing with abandon. Um, so she does. And uh, here, this is this is a very common sequence that Don players know by rote and Q players freak out. You get cut, you can Atari and then extend on the other side. Um, and it puts a lot of pressure on these two stones while you've sort of helped both sides. Uh, and it's not appropriate in every situation. It's very easy to play this when it doesn't work. Um, here, it's okay. It's it's just fine. Um, because after this, you can see, I actually get my stick quite far out, and then I can actually link up to my group with this kind of move. Um, that being said, these two stones actually could die. Um, so whoever gets to play another move there, uh, you know, or is incentivized to play, people are incentivized to play another move there. Uh, all right, here we go. This this is the capitulation of failure. Uh, we've already had the moment of failure where I tanuki, but now this is just instead like this is still a good move. Um, the reason why I played this one now is because I thought after this move, well, I don't really care about eye space specifically, so this just capturing a stone isn't big. Um, so let me get something more strong here in terms of shape. But this is this is not a shape. This is this is bad. Because uh, if you see now, white almost makes an eye and actually is much much stronger. Uh, I play here, this is a good move to sort of save everything. She comes that way, that way, just to tidy up the shapes. And uh, everything everything on the top for black is fine. She takes the biggest point, which is this Hane here. And <clears throat> this A stick is kind of way behind enemy lines. Now it has a million liberties, so it's not in big trouble, but oh god, you do have to worry about it. Um, I also do have this point at B to Atari and um, then play C to make a guaranteed eye and then very strong eye potential here. So again, it's not an imminent danger, like there are definitely countermeasures, but it's a little like I could see a lot of you being scared. All right, black, uh, white, and then I just come here. And so we got ourselves a game. Uh, so far, in general, you know, even though I have this cloud of failure with how I managed between these this weak white group and this group, <clears throat> it's not your true classic go failure. Um, where you just play a move, this is kind of not what you think it does. Well, here, we got we got one that's coming up. Your true classic go failure. Because here she plays this one. And this one perplexed me, because usually you play this Hane when you're interested in getting both sides. Uh, like, you already have a position over here, and you already have a position over here, and you want to build influence on both sides, you can play this one. And I was like, well, you don't have anything over here, like, what are you doing? Uh, so I just back off, and she plays that one, which was also kind of perplexing. Um, like, it makes sense now, but uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a move I thought of when, when I was reading out what I thought she would play next. Um, and so I'm like, okay, well, let's cut it. This, this is a go failure. This is a failure and go. <laughs> Go fail. Um, I'm still in a good position on this board. This is a really risky fight um, that I'm starting. Uh, it really actually hurts the corner because white's descend at B is more or less sente. And, uh, you know, she's got this C group nearby. And at some point, if I have a weak group over here, I still have a weak group over here. So if she can play in between them, uh, she can attack both groups simultaneously. Uh, this is a real dubious move. Really, really dubious. So if I wanted to play it, I think the correct time to play it was way back here. Uh, after this Hane, I think I can play here. And if she wants the stone, that's great. Uh, I can, I don't know what I can do. I can come out maybe. I can actually probably just connect. Uh, feels a little bit heavy, but um, I get a free Atari. These two stones are weak. Um, it's it's fine for now. Uh, but other options, if I do this, uh, can I play here? This would be nice. No, I really can't play there. Yeah, maybe I don't. I mean, I don't want to even. I don't really don't want to cut. Um, what I should do, like this is fine. This is fine. Best answer. You ready for it? Instead of cutting, just play here. And if white blocks, now I'm perfectly alive in the corner. And white really needs to fix this defect. And how do you fix it? Do you fix it this way? Well, if you do, you st you're still leaving this on the board. Uh, this is still kind of a problem. If you are uh, white, you can still be cut here. If you fix it, uh, let's see, how else do you fix this? Fix it this way. This is a good way to fix, or at least stronger way to fix. Can it keep everything connected? 
but black's going to take some free stuff, and then black's going to be aiming at this single stone over here, either with a move like this, or possibly a move like this, or in even certain circumstances, this kind of peep as well. Probably this is your, you don't really want to play this one because white gets decent enough shape off of it. So it's probably one of A or B. Um, but if white has to connect here, hey, this is a useful stone, this is a useful stone. Maybe we play something like this that helps the center group. And even though white is strong with this stick, you can very clearly see that if um, black were just to get one or two more moves on the outside, the stick's going to feel a little homeless. So yeah, so this, this A, I'm winning this whole game, right? This whole game I am going up and down, but it's always on the winning percentage. Um, I think, <laughs> pretty sure actually. Um, I think at this point, like it's a 90 plus percent win percentage for black. But sort of picking this fight here, oh man, I just threw the whole game into chaos. And again, it's really this move. Once you can see this move, um, how this just gives this white stick just enough liberties to fend for itself, and how now the black corner is dying. Uh, you feel really sad. I take some free stuff. Try to fix. Now this move by itself doesn't live once white gets strong. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, white can play here to kill you. <laughs> so uh, white just gets a little bit stronger. Again, I, t I look for some free stuff just to get a little bit stronger here in the center. And I come on top thinking, hey, if white wants to kill me now, that's great. I mean, that's not great, but it's fine. I'll live. I'll, no, I won't live. I'll die. Uh, it's it's palatable um, because if white does this right now, uh, I'm going to surround this stick. Maybe I'll even actually uh, play a move. And yeah, I'll definitely play a move. Um, what's the next killing move for white? Is it here? Uh, let's, do, 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 do. let's pretend it's there. Um, if I can s force white to you know, capture this thing and just gain um, the entire outside. Okay, I'm not even sure this is how, I don't think this is the best way to do this. You know, this is, this is <laughs> hypothetical, right? Real hypothetical. Uh, if I can get all this on the outside and all of a sudden this group feels real good and black's gonna make a ton of stuff over here, so that feels good. Like I can, I can pretty happily give up this corner if I were to get some sort of outside thickness like this. Uh, so white does not let me. <laughs> Same deal. I'm like, hey, can I just have some, some of the outside? You can kill my corner. You, I'll, I just want to take some of the outside. No, I want the outside too. Okay, okay. How about how about I'll take even less of the outside and you can still kill my corner? And uh, she agrees. <laughs> so that was where the negotiation landed. I play this move just to get more liberties. Uh, and again, here, she actually gives me a chance. She's like, okay, uh, you've had enough of the outside. It turns out I don't want to give you the corner, I don't want to give you any outside, so let's keep talking about that. And at this point I'm like, okay, now I'll take the corner and we'll just fight in the middle. But now the game's in chaos. Like, like, we don't know. Like, no one knows who's going to get what here because weak black group, weak black group, and not really weak white group, but a weak group with some defects. Um, so it, this looks like it's very greedy to take the corner right now. Uh, white doesn't have very many points in this board. If you actually look at this, there's very few points here. Uh, we got about five there for white, uh, another maybe six here for white, and I don't know, maybe, not even really six here because of this dumpling is stupid. So that's probably three. <laughs> uh, here's another five. Maybe though, maybe, you know, down here, there, if white plays a move, white can get 10 as the biggest territory on the board. Um, you can't you can't win the game with a you know a couple five point territories and a ten right this is not enough. Um, meanwhile, like <clears throat> you know this is ten ish. Uh, this is more than ten ish. This might even be approaching. Well, depends on who gets this end game, I suppose. Let's say let's say it's plus ten. Uh, this is ten ish. Uh, maybe more if if black gets to play here first. There's another five down here. So I mean black is coming at more like thirty five to forty points, and white's stuck more in the mid 20s so i mean we're looking at a pretty low scoring game right now uh anybody but it's still anybody's game right black has weak groups so it just depends on this attack here we go all right white plays here this is an overplay don't play this <laughs> white should so just play something a little more patient um again it's a low scoring game if if white can just keep some pressure on tidy up all the shapes maybe play a move or two over here make 15 20 points in this side of the board that could be a win but she plays this one, so now we have to cut. 
and we're just sort of off to the races. She decides to really fight in the center. She now has a weak group in between my two weak groups. I take a bunch of, or I, well, I take one forcing move, and then even though, so at this point, she's winning the game, right? Like, like, keep keep that in mind, or at least probabilistically, right? I have territory, but she has an essentially an attack on two weak groups. That an attack on two weak groups is worth, you know, let's say thirty points, um, um, because she only has one weak group. Maybe maybe if it's two weak groups versus two weak groups, maybe that would be not quite worth as much. But anyway. Um, this is a good game for her, even though she doesn't quite have the same points. Uh, but then she plays here. And I don't know why she played here. This is a really, really terrible move. Um, I think she's like thinking, you know, at the end, if we just play something like this out, there'll be some sort, like, some sort of shape thing here that lets me destroy her in Sente, but there's not. Um, second, this move... Uh, th does threaten to capture or at least cut off these stones so, like this is this is a shape point this is a valuable shape point but I have a moment to respond it's like if you play a stone I get to play a stone and so uh, is that not the game I right, I mess up the game yeah so I just I just respond here and if she really wants these stones that's great you can take these stones good luck with that uh, <clears throat> like great <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna have my own fun over here. <laughs> Uh, so this is a really bad exchange that swings the game back into my favor. Like, really, really bad. Uh, we play this out. We play this out. And here we go. You ready? And, and the move I really want to play is here. It doesn't quite work right. Um, oh, no, sorry. Yeah, I play... I, I protect once first, just to link up the two weak groups. Uh, she makes that push, which surprised me. But now this is my opportunity to actually really attack her three stones in the center. <clears throat> and at this point, I actually felt really good in this game. I was like, okay, I've more or less solved my problems of connecting these two weak groups. Uh, any Anything that I need to do left, I can just lean on these three weak stones to fix any shape problems I have. Uh, and once I and, and I can more than likely do that with Sente as long as I'm attacked with them. And I can come back here, fix this territory, uh, claim victory, and go home, right? Beating... Uh, Sophia. Well, I let's we're talking. This is the go fail. This, I mean, I mean, here we go. Like you know, it's coming. She attaches. I attach. These moves are good. I play here, uh, which is good. And then uh, I try to squeeze every last juice from the lemon by playing here, right, and forcing her to connect in style. But this was a bad move. It's not it's not one of those like directly bad moves like like by itself it's fine like there's nothing really obviously going to go wrong right now so I'm gonna play another move um, and just keep the pressure on these five stones but it's just that I had something better and the better thing I had is just to play here <clears throat> and this puts white in a conundrum uh, if white wants this stone that's great she can have it but I'm gonna take the three. And not only am I going to take the three, I'm going to leave a cut behind. Uh, so I can push through and cut later. Furthermore, I didn't actually damage any of the liberties on this stick. So if she comes here, um, this is still not a real problem. So even though I don't get any points over here, I don't die. Um, I get to kill some of her. She still has a problem. And, uh, you know, everything is good for me. Like, everything is going fine. Um, I'm a little bit worried about this move, but I'm not sure why the robot wasn't. <laughs> I forgot to look it up before I started this review. Uh, I wonder if I can f actually find two eyes in here. It looks like I can only find one eye. All right, more on that later. <laughs> in the game, I play this unfortunate thing. I play this way, and I thought I thought this actually worked really well for me, but it really doesn't because of these peeps and pushes she has. Um, I have to play this way uh, to make sure I don't die. And again, she peeps, I connect, she gets the stone out. Um, I run the stone out. I'm like, hey, I can, I can, this is fine. <laughs> um, she nets, and so I get to take this. Now, if I play here, this looks very similar to what we just did, um, except uh, maybe, well, she's still sort of threatening to cut, right? Can she play this way? No. Oh yeah, she can totally play this way. Yeah, so she can still cut through. So this is kind of scary. 
Um, also, I'm not sure why I got really attached to these two stones, but I did. I really wanted these two stones. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we make a bunch of exchanges, so eventually it all gets connect. Everything gets connected. She connects out. I connect the two groups. I've killed two stones, and I have the option to kill three more. Uh, she does get this Atari though, and then this peep, which now because I've took away the liberties, you guys notice the difference on the stick. There's no more free liberties here, so this peep is actually really valuable. Uh, and now at this point, I'm kind of I'm kind of behind, right? If she can kill this and this. That's enough points for her, even though I, even though she still doesn't have a lot of points. Um, that's two big kills. This is Sente, just against this dumpling. So we play this out. That's actually the end of the game record. Um, we play out an end game with a whole ton of mistakes in it, and the f and I, I, if I had the game record, I'd show you at least several other go fails uh, because the game ends up being a half point loss for me after all the end game is said and done, and that was just brutal. That was just. Oh, half point losses are just I had one last year too that stung. Uh yeah, I don't know what to say about them. Maybe maybe one of you guys out there has a more poetic thing to say about half point losses. Uh but yeah, we had a we had a crowd of people watching the end game around our table at this point. Or not at this maybe uh, people were wandering by our table. People started tuning into our game. Uh but that day we were the last game in the main playing hall that was still being played. Uh, going into lunch. Uh, so there was a crowd, uh, um, Jenny Shen, the two Dom pro, she came over to the table and looked at the game a few times. And when I saw her later, she was like, oh, of course you won, right? <laughs> Which is just, you know, what an asshole thing to say. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, because, uh, man, I don't know, go fail. That was a go fail. I'm still feeling salty about this. Let me just drink my tea, okay? Let me just eh, have some alone time. Go to a dark corner of my room. Hmm. Alright, we'll see you next time for another episode of Go Fails. <laughs>